technology consultant with EMC, been with EMC for about five and a half years now, almost yeah. Been through, seen through various changes that and technologies and innovations that EMC has been bringing to enhance customer uh, infrastructures. So I'll today talk about Oracle, what are the benefits that we are bringing in Oracle environments and how it will help you. So the agenda of all the three presentations that we're covering today is more or less in line. So we'll primarily talk about cost efficiency, how to deploy Oracle in a very cost efficient uh, manner. We'll talk about enhancing or boosting performance of your Oracle application. So talking about supercharging your Oracle performance. And finally, how do you protect your Oracle databases? So why are we talking about Oracle out here? Well, what's EMC got to do with Oracle. So this is from an independent IDC survey of September 2011. More data, more databases of Oracle reside on EMC storage today than any other storage vendor in the world. So we are hosting tons, maybe petabytes and petabytes of Oracle databases today. So we are the ones who need to work closely with Oracle to integrate them in such a fashion that, you know, our customers get the best benefits of our databases. Of, of the database environments. Right. So this is what we've got to do with EM, EMC. 16 years of partnership with Oracle, joint partnership, joint white papers, blueprints, integration points. We've got almost 70,000 mutual customers worldwide today. Customers which are having mutual support from EMC and Oracle both put together, right? We have six joint support centers. Any problem on Oracle databases with running on EMC storage, you know, generally there's a finger pointing that typically happens. The database guy says, you know, it's the server problem. Server guy is coming back saying that, you know, check with the storage, my server is running fine and the pinpointing happens. So we have joint escalation centers, joint support centers wherein Oracle engineers and EMC engineers sit together and work on customer cases to resolve problems. We have more than six centers today worldwide. So coming to the first agenda. So I think I have a right here to talk about Oracle because we have been working very closely with Oracle to develop new technologies. So the first part of today's agenda is cost efficiency in the Oracle environment. How do you optimize your Oracle environments very efficiently? So I'll just quickly cover about what Oracle is all about, what are the challenges in Oracle environments and what is the overall, overall structure of Oracle. Firstly to talk about the challenges, right? Data is growing everywhere. It's not just Oracle databases. Any data that you take today is growing. So is the case with databases. The volumes are increasing. The queries are getting complex day by day, right? People are running various queries. There's a huge load, not just on the servers, which are running your Oracle databases, but also the st uh, storages, which are hosting the databases, right? So users start facing the performance problem. The complexity, the queries, time to turn around the queries is getting longer and longer. Users, your business is getting frustrated. So it is an inhibitor to your efficiency. How to improve the efficiency of the end users? Well, disk IOs have always been a bottleneck, right? You could always keep on upgrading your servers and putting more memory in your servers. The servers grew at a much faster rate. The CPU speeds kept on growing continuously, right? Whereas the disk speeds never improved. We were always in 10K and 15K RPM to drive. We could never go beyond that. Right? So because of inefficiencies of the disk or the storage world, your disk IO bottlenecks, which also causes a bottleneck on the CPU performance, these are the major challenges that a typical Oracle DBA or an Oracle environment faces while improving the efficiency of Oracle. So just for the benefit of those who are not aware of what Oracle is all about, I'll just quickly run through what is the <coughs> structure of Oracle. It basically comprises of three different categories. One is what we call as the data files, where the actual data resides, the actual customer data resides. Then we have a component called as the redo logs, wherein the changes that are being made to the database are captured in these redo log files. So all the changes that are continuously happening, these are very write and intensive kind of files, and that is where all the data is kept. And there's a third component called as the archive logs, once the data is captured in the redo log files, right, it is then flushed into the archive logs for maybe you need to 
for general purposes and maybe if you need to recover at some po later point in st uh, time, you could do that using the archive log. So these are the broad category of files that you have in a typical Oracle database structure. So when we are talking about optimizing Oracle performance, we will talk about the protocol and the connectivity choices that today Oracle has to offer and how EMC can integrate with this very tightly. <coughs> Secondly, we will talk about fully automated storage tiering. Amit has covered the benefits how of what is fast or fast VP, the technologies, the full form of which is fully automated storage tiering. I will talk in detail how, how it will integrate in the Oracle world and boost the performance of your Oracle environment. So how to optimize the storage overall. So when we are talking about a EMC unified storage, we are talking about the VNX or any other platform today which offers any type of connectivity to all your user files or your database files. Oracle can work very well in NFS world, it can work very well in the fiber channel world. Today the unified storage that EMC has to offer offers you SIFS NFS kind of connectivity for your Oracle database environments. We also offer you FC SAN connectivity on the same platform. So you don't have to look at independent platforms hosting different kinds of databases or different database requirements. You could do it through the same integrated unified storage. The benefit that it brings you is obviously on the cost management perspective because now instead of investing in multiple systems, you are just investing in a single system which can offer you any kind of protocol connectivity. We offer you the flexibility to move from one protocol to another as and when demands of a particular database grow or shrink. Right? At the same time, offers you unmatched scalability in terms of upgrading your drives or your controllers whenever your business requirements increase. And finally, optimizing the performance using various technologies like fast and fast cache. So it offers you multiple choices for flexibility in deploying your Oracle environment and also to boost the performance of your databases. So as I was discussing earlier, the CPU performance speeds have kept on increasing, right? As well from the 400 megahertz, 600 megahertz, we are talking already in the gigahertz world today. We are talking about multi-core CPUs. But the disk speeds never improved. The disk speed always stayed stagnant at 15k RPM drives, right? Not more than that. We never had 25k or 50k RPM coming up. That was the flaw of mechanical disks. Today, the kind of offerings that we have, right? SSDs, solid state drives, wherein latency, your RPM is no longer a problem. Instead of having mechanical drives, it's stored in solid state, uh, state wherein it can match up to your CPU speeds. And that is where the logical balancing of the overall storage happens. So your servers are growing at one pace, so does the storage. With SSDs, you can definitely boost performance. That is how the compute power and the I.O. power from the disk is both balanced together to optimize the performance of databases. So I'll just go a bit deep into how fast cache works and what is fast cache all about, right? Typic in a typical server storage environment, when we are talking about a server, an application database server directly talking to a storage, the storage is limited by its own DRAM cache, which as Amit described earlier could be 16 GB, 32 GB, not more than that in a typical case. Now, caching is intelligent. Of course, quite a good amount of I.O. is hold, held on by the cache of the storage. But that is still that limitation of a 32 GB or a 16 GB cache. It cannot grow more than that. When we introduced the SSDs, the concept of fast cache came in, wherein using the SSDs as an extension of the cache of the controller, which we have seen tremendous performance boost. A typical performance boost that we are talking about is about four to five times better than a traditional storage cache. What happens is that it acts as an extension of the cache itself. Data that is cached by the storage controller, right? If it's not there in the cache, or if it's not there in the cache, it goes back to the drives, the physical drives, to fetch that data, and then that uh, data is kept into the SSDs. So next time when the same data is pulled for, it looks up now into two layers, not just the storage cache of the controller, but also the SSD drives and the response improves. That is where we have seen good enough performance benefits by deploying fast cache in environments. So
So, how was fast developed? How, what was the theory behind fast development? Right? We all know about how fast or fast sweep or fast cache works, right? We we are talking about the 80-20 rule. EMC has around 30 PhDs in the uh, center of excellence who are do, doing development, right? So these are guys are uh, as their PhDs are very intelligent guys, as you know. Should not be talking much more, more about them. We have analyzed tons and tons of data, almost close to two petabytes worth of data, customer data environments. We have analyzed more than 10,000 plus I/O different I/O patterns, and what we learned is that. 80% of the time the data is cold or inactive. Only 20% of the data in a given database environment is hot or which needs super boost performance. And the smaller amount of data that I can move into the fast cache or the cache will improve my performance. That is where the 80-20 rule comes in. So typically 20% of your data is very hot. And even if I pick up a 20% of that 20%, will be the super hot or the really active data. So 20% of 20, if I do the maths, is roughly about 4% data, which is the hottest data in a given database environment. Now, if I could put that 4% data into a super fast area, it will turbocharge my Oracle database. That's the logic behind it. So that's what EMC learned, what to do, what is the theory behind Oracle. Yeah. Sorry. So we had to validate it. It's the principle. It's the principle. Yeah, but we yeah. It used to work in the mechanical world. We had to validate in the database world, right? So we have validation with our PhDs now. So what we built on it. So the whole fast works on three engines basically. One is what we call as the statistical engine, which collects what is the hot and the cold data. It collects, continuously keeps on collecting the data from the storage environment. The analytics engine is the engine which gets its feed from the statistics engine. So in the analytical engine, it will un take the statistics and understand that, you know, this is my hot, this is cold, this is what I need to do. And finally, we have the movement engine which physically moves the data across from one tier to another. Mind you, this is happening at the storage level. There is nothing to do with your Oracle or your application server environment. So server or your database never comes to know what is happening behind. This is all intelligently controlled by the controller of the storage system. So the movement engine keeps on moving the data from one tier to another as and when the host IO applications or requests come in. So this keeps on continuously happening. This is what we mean by fast. So this is happening when you are sitting at your desk. This is happening when you are sleeping at home in the night or perhaps